How do you find encryption in malware? This is a common question I hear from people interested in malware analysis. So in this video, I'll cover five approaches I use to locate code responsible for encryption. Let's get started. If you've been following along with the videos on my channel, you'll know that I often use the same sample across multiple videos to provide some continuity and also to encourage you to really dig in and actually look at these samples on your own machines. So today we'll continue analyzing a ransomware DLL, specifically a file from the WannaCry execution chain. Because while it's an older sample, there is so much to learn from it that carries forward to even more current ransomware. And because there are so many public reports written about WannaCry, it's easy to check your work if you're analyzing this sample for the first time. So I have my WannaCry DLL here on my desktop. As always, see the description for a link to this sample. And I've already loaded it into Ghidra to actually save some time. So strategy number one for finding encryption in malware is to view strings and APIs. I know, this is an easy one, but we gotta start somewhere. So you could use many tools to do this, but since I do have Ghidra up here, we could go to Window, Define Strings. And on the right-hand side, we could use a filter down here at the bottom in order to expedite our search. Uh, maybe we can type the word uh, crypt here in order to find things related to encryption. Uh, the results indicate references to the Microsoft Crypto API, as well as some strings specific to WannaCry's decryptor executable. And we could pick one of these, like uh, let's say CryptoGen Key. And then we could start viewing its reference right here in order to begin understanding how this API is actually used. In addition to looking at strings, we could also look at imports by browsing to Window, Symbol References. Now there is more information here in this window than simply imports. So in order to filter this a bit, I could click on this gear icon here. And then what I generally do is unselect a few of these just so I can focus exclusively on imports. And then I will go ahead and press OK. And now we have a smaller list of really just the imported functions. And similar to strings, I could use a text filter here on the bottom. Again, let's just type a crypt here. And now I have a smaller set of APIs related to encryption. So I could choose one, for example, crypt export key. And then on the right-hand side, it populates with the references to that API. I wanna focus on a reference where that API is actually called. So if I just click on this first one right here and then minimize this window, it actually takes me to the code where we see a call to crypt export key and I could resize these columns just a little bit to confirm that that is in fact the right API. Now, of course, not all crypto related functions have the word crypt in it. So we need some more flexible approaches. This brings me to strategy number two, which is using plugins and scripts to extend the functionality of the reverse engineering framework you use. Of course, here today, I am using Ghidra and the capability I wanna highlight is the publicly available FindCrypt module. There's a similar plugin for IDA Pro and Binary Ninja. In fact, the original FindCrypt was created almost two decades ago, and it was basically the foundation for all other crypto finding scripts out there. I've already installed the FindCrypt module for Ghidra on my system, and it's actually initiated every time I ask Ghidra to perform its auto analysis. I can prove it to you by going to analysis, auto analyze, and then right here, you'll see a reference to FindCrypt, which is already checked. So every time the auto analysis kicks off, it actually uses that uh, module that I have installed. To go ahead and look at the results of running this module, we can go to the symbol tree here on the left-hand side under labels and open up the C folder here. And anything that begins with crypt underscore is basically an output of this FindCrypt module. You can see it's found several values related to AES, which is in fact implemented in this malware. If for example, I click on one of these like the uh, AES encryption S box, it takes me to the location in the program where it found values associated with the AES substitution box. And then I can take a look at uh, any of these values here, uh, any of these references in order to better understand how this algorithm is actually used during execution. Now we don't have time to discuss the details of AES here today, uh, but this is how you could arrive at a relevant function in order to dig deeper. Strategy number three is to use COPPA. I feel like I discuss COPPA in almost every video because that's how great it is. As a reminder, it's an awesome tool you can use to find interesting behavior in malware. And Mandiant released a COPPA Ghidra integration, which allows us to run COPPA within Ghidra and more easily browse to the functionality that COPPA identifies. I've already gone ahead and downloaded the Ghidra COPPA scripts from GitHub. And in order to launch these scripts, I can go to the script manager in Ghidra. 
And now I can search for COPPA. You'll see that we have two scripts here. Uh, COPPA underscore Explorer will add bookmarks, comments, and adds to the symbol tree on the left-hand side, while COPPA underscore Ghidra is similar to the standalone COPPA tool. I currently still prefer this second script right here, so that's what I'm gonna use today. Now, when you double-click on either of these, it wants you to specify the directory of COPPA rules, which I've already downloaded from the GitHub repository, so I'll browse there now. Then I'll go ahead and click OK. It then asks you to choose a uh, verbose setting here. I usually choose this verbose option right here, which provides the virtual offsets so I can quickly jump to the code of interest. Then I'll press OK, and COPPA will begin running here down in the console window. Now I can go ahead and uh, scan the output here to see what it has found. And you can see multiple references to AES as well as RC4. To jump to one of these locations, all you have to do is double click on one of these virtual addresses like this one ending in 5DC0. And this will actually take me to the function where it believes it has found evidence of AES. And of course you would proceed to take a closer look at that code. So as you're seeing, there is some overlap between the results each of these strategies provides, but the goal is to give you options. Strategy number four is to use Yara. As you're probably aware, because YouTube is full of videos on Yara, Yara is a tool developed to help malware analysts identify, classify, and group malware based on the presence of text or hexadecimal strings. These strings are placed into rules which can be used against files on disk or content in memory to identify matches. You could create your own rules to identify values related to encryption in malware, or use some rules that are publicly available and then modify them to fit your needs. For example, this GitHub repo has a rules file called crypto underscore signatures dot yar, which appears to check many of the same values that the FindCrypt module looks for. So let's go ahead and run this against our DLL. I've already gone ahead and downloaded the yar file and placed it on my desktop here in the VM. And now I'll use Yara to run that rules file against my ransomware DLL. So I'll type Yara 64, followed by a dash W to suppress any warnings, a dash S to go ahead and print any matched strings, now I'll include the actual file that includes the signatures and then the DLL that we want to take a closer look at. I'll then hit enter. And similar to FindCrypt, Yara found values related to AES. It did not find RC4 because that algorithm does not have any constants associated with it. COPPA actually disassembles and analyzes the code using its rule engine to identify evidence of encryption, making it a bit more robust. And the last strategy is probably the most manual because if all else fails, you can always just search for mathematical operations. All encryption algorithms include operations like add or subtract, XOR, and shift left or rotate left. To be clear, not all algorithms include all of those operations, but an algorithm will generally include at least some. So if I didn't have access to FindCrypt or COPPA, I could search for an instruction mnemonic by doing the following within Ghidra. I could go to search and then program text. Here, what I want to search for are not comments, but instruction mnemonics. And now I can choose the mnemonic of choice. I usually like to search for a shift left or a rotate left because the other operations I mentioned are common in contexts outside of encryption as well. So here, for example, I might do a shift left and then choose search all. The results include matches across only a few functions, and I immediately recognize that function ending in 5DC0 as one associated with AES because both FindCrypt and COPPA found that one as well. I hope you enjoyed this pretty quick video on finding encryption in malware. Be sure to check out my other videos for more malware analysis content, and I'll see you next time.